Welcome back to Your Photo, Our Look. My name is Matt Kleskowski, and this is brought to you by On One and OnOnePhotos.com. Uh, if you checked out any of the other episodes over on the website here, uh, you can leave a comment with a link, and basically I'm editing your photos with, uh, with my style to them. Hopefully give you some creative ideas on workflow and what we would do. So let's get right to it. Uh, take a look at some of the photos. We got a tree, got a little urban street photography, got a lion and uh, some lightning um, all right so let's start off here i try to i try to keep this as short as possible usually about 15 minutes or so um uh, first one they sent the this person sent a bracketed series and uh, and I, I don't know that i would do anything with the bracketed series because honestly we can get all we want from this one uh so the dark one you know i usually try to get a photo with as much shadows as possible or shadow detail uh, that doesn't have it that doesn't have it, and that does have it. So I could probably get most of it from this one too. I can just tell by moving the exposure slider back and forth. But uh, over here, if I bring it down, I still have all the detail I want. The only thing I lose is this, and I don't care about it. It's like the sun, it should be white. Um, so I'm not gonna mess with, with details like that. So if we can make it simple to edit one photo, I will. Uh, let's go ahead and crop this a little bit. Try to, uh, in fact, I'm gonna grab my straighten tool and we'll straighten right along that horizon line there. See if we can crop out that top area. I want to try to avoid getting cropping out too much of this chair, so I'll crop down a little bit, maybe over from this side. Just don't want to crop too much of that chair out because I like it. Uh, let's see here. Bring maybe the exposure down a little bit, warm the photo up, bring the highlights down. You can see that'll tone down the clouds a little. Uh, shadows, we don't have to worry too much. Option or alt click on whites and blacks is the little formula here. Get a good white point, option or alt click get a good black point. A um, little bit of color saturation here will help just to kind of boost, especially the blues in the sky and some of the warms. And then we could finish it up with a, a vignette here inside of Lightroom. So that's before, that's after, I, you know, cool photo. And I, oh, I might add some, uh, I might add some sharpening to it too. We can zoom in. Really, I'm going to look for what's up front when I sharpen. So I'll crank the amount up quite a bit, crank the radius up quite a bit. Just don't take your detail up too high or it'll start to get noisy. Um, but I could be done at this point. What I am gonna do is get rid of the vignette and get rid of the warming because we're gonna apply some style to this. I just wanna show you an, an offshoot of what we could do with it. Uh, but honestly, that the point that I just had, it was I, I liked it. Uh, we're gonna go File, Plugin, Extras, and I'm gonna go to Perfect Layers. If I go to Layers first, you'll see what I'm about to do, um, which is to remove that little guy. Okay, because Layers has all these retouching tools here. So Perfect Eraser is awesome. It's a lot like Photoshop's Content Aware. Uh, works works pretty darn close to it. And uh, go ahead and get rid of half of it. I usually do a half. I usually get to the line, like wherever there's a horizon line or something. And then I'll go in and then I'll try to get rid of the other half. Okay, rather than do the whole thing and make it work a lot harder, I usually just try to get what I can halfway and then see if I can get the other half later. All right. And if you're having trouble, you can always go to the clone stamp tool, option or alt click, and uh, that'll help hide your tracks a little bit right there. Okay, so that's looking good. We're done in layers. Now, since we went into perfect layers first, we can hop over to effects and hit this with just a uh, couple of effects here. I'm going to go to the presets section and go down to urban. And um, I really like urban sun. It's just got a really cool, warm, hazy type of a, a look to it. Um, so I, I kind of, I like it a lot. So I'm not going to do too much more to it. I might try to protect the highlights. See what it does. You see, yeah, there's a lot of lens flare going up on here in the sky. I might try to protect a little bit of the highlights um, under the protect section just to, to bring some of that detail back. You could add a vignette to this, but I mean, I kind of like it here. Let's go try it go to the filter section. Uh, somebody had sent an email and said, you know, I, I, and I am, I'm a creature of habit. You know, I'm, I'm using the same big softy all the time. How come I don't use any of the other ones? Honestly, because any of the other ones don't really look good. So, um, you know, you can look black edges, burnout makes the edges brighter, which if that's what you want, then you know, you can make the edges brighter. It kind of works for this photo, but big soft, like I said, I'm a creature of habit and I think the big softy one looks pretty good. So let's hit apply. I 
And now we're back in Lightroom. You can see we have our uh, newly edited version. Sometimes this doesn't happen, guys. It's, you know, if you go to Photoshop or you go to a plugin and sometimes you don't see it, I'm in a collection. Um, so it, it's, it's weird and how I won't even lie to you. If you don't see it, go to the original photo. You can right click and choose go to folder in library. It'll take you to the original folder where you should have your newly edited photo next to it. So if you're ever not sure, that's a quick way to find it. But let's go to the original here and just click uh, reset. All right, take a look. That's before, that's after. Before, after. Cool. Okay, moving on, a little bit of some street photography here. Uh, let's do just, you know, exposure, I think we're good. Um, people, you could argue either way on cropping this. I am gonna crop it to the top and to the left a little bit, just to get that out. I like I like having the, the red right on the edge there. Uh, whites and blacks will make a huge difference. Option or alt click, get a white point, option or alt click to get a black point. So that'll make a big difference in the photo. We can add a little bit of warmth to it. A um, little bit of clarity will kind of bring out some of the detail a little bit here. And uh, not too much more that I'm going to do. Um, you know, we can sharpen, but the dynamic contrast and the stuff I'm about to do to it is probably pretty close to sharpening. Go to lens corrections, turn on the profile corrections here to see if that helps anything. And uh, there's not a lot more that I'm going to do here inside of Lightroom. So let's hop over. I know I'm not gonna go anywhere else but perfect effects, so I'm just gonna go through the edit in menu. If I thought I was gonna use multiple apps, I'd go to uh, the file menu under plugin extras and go to layers first. But I pretty much know what I'm gonna do here. Uh, or at least I know that I'm gonna go into effects, so I don't have to go somewhere else first. Uh, let's see, let's go check out the presets. Uh, the couple decent ones here that worked, worked well in this one. I kinda liked Blue Dawn. All right, and that's under the cinematic section. Uh, I thought Blue Dawn looked pretty cool. What I did is I went to the split tone because you can turn a layer on and off in the filter stack here and you can see what it's affecting. So I knew split tone was really affecting the reds here. And I took the, uh, the masking brush at a lower opacity and, uh, and I can just go in here and I can paint and bring back some of that brighter red. I like the muted tones of it but I just wanted to bring back a little bit of that brighter red so I can paint that back in. Um, so that's one option for it was the Blue Dawn. I'm gonna hit the trash can here, let's start over. And then another one is right down here. The Urban seems to be a popular one today. Um, the Urban, the Urbex is a good one and Urban Cool, again, it's kind of similar to the other one, gives you a cooler type of a version of it. But the Urbex gives you a warm and, uh, and very, very saturated version of the photo and very, very detailed. It makes that detail really stand out. Uh, if it's too much, a lot of it's on this HDR look layer and you can just reduce the opacity of it. And that'll kind of reel it back in a little bit. It doesn't include a vignette. You know that we're gonna add one. So we'll go over here to our filters and go down here to vignette. Uh, I'm not even gonna go big soft, I'm gonna go subtle. Just something subtle, just to darken the edges, bring us in toward the center of the photo a little bit more. We'll hit apply. Then we can go and check out. I'll reset on the before photo. So that's our before, that's our after. Before and after. Moving on down the line. All right, I was gonna look at this one last week. I didn't get a chance. This one's easy, you're gonna like this. Um, I'd pull back the highlights to get the details in the clouds. Open up the shadows, optional alt click, do a quick white adjustment, optional alt click, do a quick, quick blacks adjustment. And then rather than paint clarity, or rather than put clarity on, because you see clarity is gonna start to give almost a shadow around the, the sky there and the clouds. Um, I will boost the saturation just a bit here, but rather than just crank up the clarity, what I'm gonna do is get my brush and I'm gonna increase the clarity setting quite a bit. And then I'm just gonna paint. All right, and we're just gonna paint a lot of clarity onto these buildings right here. All right, if you want to, you can even bump up the exposure on them a little bit, maybe warm them a little too. Just, you know, in fact, I really like that because it almost gives, there's a lot of, there's a feeling of light coming from over here. And as I warm that up, look at it. It gives a feeling like there's really some nice warm light, even though it's, it's not exactly at sunrise or sunset. There is some nice warm light uh, coming in on there and that really kind of helps 
uh, helps to enhance it. But honestly, guys, there's there's not much more that I do I would do to this. So I, I hate to go jump into somewhere else and do something just for the heck of it. Um, that I'd probably pretty much finish up there. Um, you know, it's one of those photos as as I go through and add a little bit of a vignette there. Um, it's one of those photos that when you go somewhere and you're traveling, photos like this help tell the story. So that's why I like photos like this. They, you know, if you're going to make a photo book, if you're going to make a website, whatever, of a, of a trip somewhere, they help tell the story, but they might not necessarily be the hero shot of, of the entire trip. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to necessarily spend the whole workflow on them where I'll just do some quick things in Lightroom to them um, because they do help tell the story and I want to tweak them a little bit. Um, but that's about it. And I didn't sharpen it, but I would go in here. And, uh, and this one can handle probably a lot of sharpening. We could crank up that amount setting again, 1.4, 1.5. I'm not even going to mess with detail because I think we, uh, we are sharp enough. Okay. So if I hit the backslash key, that's before, after, before, after. Okay. Uh, let's see. Here's the lion. So I wasn't going to edit this one because I saw all this stuff and, and I, I kind of know there's not too much we can do to help it. And then I thought, you know what? This would be my luck. You know, this is probably, you know, sometimes I guess you can go on a safari and get the awesome shot. And I'm sure lots of people have. Uh, I have no idea if this was taken on a safari or not, or maybe just at a local zoo. But to me, sometimes things aren't perfect. So I figure let's go ahead and edit. Uh, I'd crop it down a little bit here just to get rid of that. And, you know, of course, we would love if the mouth wasn't cut off. We would love if all this stuff wasn't here, but it is. So let's just make the best of it. Whites and blacks will help out significantly. Option or alt-click. Option or alt-click. Uh, that'll help out quite a bit. Uh, we can boost the saturation just a little bit here. Boost the warmth, overall warmth, just a little bit here. But um, that's about it. I'm going to go down here, add some detail. A little sharpening. I'm not going to do too much because I'm going to use, to me, what my favorite detail sharpening contrast um, enhancer is, and that's going to be the dynamic contrast. So I'm not going to do too much here. Lens corrections, I turn it on. I don't know that it's going to do too much uh, to a photo like this. It's not very wide angle, but uh, that's about, you know, before, after, inside of Lightroom. Let's go ahead over to perfect layers. So I'll go here first just to give it a try and show you I, I kind of know it's not going to work because I, I did. I tried. I put some time into this to see if I did one 15-minute video on just removing all the grass, could we do it? And, you know, if you spent some time and you were really, really patient with it, um, you might be able to get it. It's tough. So I'll go to the perfect eraser just to give you an example here. You want to make the brush fairly small um, and then just kind of paint, maybe not paint a whole huge line because that gives it more to try to fix and try to match. So let it pick it apart piece by piece. Um, so you could try that and you know, you'll know you have some luck. I say some. You know, you're seeing a couple little patches there, but hey, somebody who didn't know what this looked like before might not ever know. So that it's not necessarily a bad thing. I don't, I don't think it's totally hacking the photo up, but it's also probably not doing as good as of a job as we'd like. And then what you know, if it fixes and leaves some patchy areas, you can go in and paint them over again. Um, we can grab our clone stamp tool. You see the edges. It's it's hard for the magic eraser to uh, or the perfect eraser or magic per what is it called? Perfect. Um, it's hard for it to, to get it the first time, especially on edges. So I'll usually clone in those circumstances. Option or alt click and sample and see if I can, I'm not even going to worry about that. We can try cloning over here. It's probably going to look like a big line down and it does. So you got the idea. I'm not going to spend, you know, you could try it. I mean, with a lot of cloning and healing work, you could get rid of those. I'll leave it this way. I don't know that I would normally do that to the photo, but let's go over here to effects. And really what I want to do here is, is, is let's make the detail stand out in this photo. All right. That's one thing we can do. So I'll go to dynamic contrast. I'll go to the natural version. And, um, and we, we, you know, whenever we add dynamic contrast, especially if we have a soft blurry background, what we want to do is take our masking brush and we want to paint it away. I don't want to make blurry backgrounds. Um, 
I don't want to add contrast to blurry backgrounds. You, you pay money for lenses that blur the backgrounds. Um, you try to, you, you know, you make, it helps make your subjects stick out, it helps make them separated from the background. So the last thing we want to do is draw more attention to it by adding contrast. So I want to paint it out. So you can see we did just that with, uh, with the masking brush here. Um, but here, let me zoom in and, uh, and take a look. Give it a second to render. And we're going to show you this is, that's before, that's after. And I could go down here to the detail section and increase the small details and it'll even punch in a little bit more. So really bring out that fur, really bring out the details uh, that we have here. So that's a, that's a great filter for it. And you guessed it. Probably go and finish this up under the vignette section with a big softy. And I've definitely reduced the layer opacity on that one. I don't want it to be too dark, but just a little bit to bring you back into the photo. So that's before, that's after. Let's hit apply. And now I'm back in Lightroom. It did indeed happen to me where this photo did not come back. So I right click on the original go to folder and library because I'm in a collection right now. And what it'll show you, it'll have actually the, the edited file right next to it. So let's go back to develop, hit reset on the original. And uh, that's our before photo. And that's our after photo. So before and a very quick retouching job on some of that area on the after photo. Again, if you spend some more time, you might be able to get it uh, looking a little bit better than that. And maybe even get a couple of those guys off of there as well. All right, so uh, that about wraps up this week. I'll start next week with the, the next photo that I was going to do, which is the stormy scene. Um, I've got such a good preset. I, I don't have it as part of Perfect Effects, but it works so good on this photo. So uh, I'll start off next week with that one. But in the meantime, thanks so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you again next time.